Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math lesson. Today we're going to be talking about a specific kind of problem where the problem tells you there's a function f and a function g, and you have to show that those two functions are inverses of each other. If that's something that you want a little help on or just want to see an example of how you would actually prove that, this is the video for you. I'm going to show you exactly how to do this type of problem step by step and explain it in a way that will help you when you have to go do this on other examples. So if that sounds good to you, be sure to stick around to the end of the video so you can see all the tips and tricks you're going to need to solve this type of problem on your own. And let's go ahead and jump right into it. Show that F and G are inverse functions. And we're going to do that in two ways. First, we're going to do it algebraically. And B is going to be graphically. OK, so two parts to this question. We're going to show that F and G are inverse functions. We're going to have F of X equals uh, 3 minus 4X. And we're going to have G of X equals 3 minus X all over 4. OK. So first of all, let's go ahead and show that F and G are inverse functions of each other algebraically. So again, two part question here. We're gonna do it algebraically and graphically. We'll start with algebraically um, and then we'll get into how to show this graphically. So part A, algebraically. So to show that two functions are inverses of each other algebraically, that really just comes from the definition of what an inverse function is. So you want to keep in mind an inverse function, what the definition of that is, is if you have f of f inverse of x, that should just equal x. And if you have f inverse of f of x, that should also equal x. So all this really means, this means, well, really two things. If you take your inverse function, f inverse of x, and plug it into your function f, and then simplify it all the way down, you should just end up with x. And then similarly, if you take your function f and plug it into your inverse function, plug it into f inverse, and simplify it all the way down, you should just end up with x also. So we want to kind of verify both of those components here. So to do that, what we're going to want to do is we're just going to take, in this case, we have f and g instead of f and, and f inverse. So in this case, we probably want to think of it as f of g of x equals x and g of f of x equals x. So let's go ahead and kind of just start with what those two things are. So first of all, f of g of x, all that's saying is you're gonna take your function g of x and plug it into your function f. So we're gonna take this function g here and go to our function f and wherever we see an x, we're gonna replace it with the entire function of g. So we're just gonna replace this x with this whole thing here. So doing that is gonna give us three minus four and then in parentheses so always make sure when you're doing this kind of a thing you replace your x with the entire function of g you need to make sure to put your entire function of g in parentheses or else it may not distribute properly and it may not simplify down to what it should simplify down to so we're going to replace our function x with three minus x all over four so three minus x all over four okay and we need to verify does this simplify down to just equal x if it does then you know we can move on to the next part and verify that one next but let's go ahead and simplify this so first of all this negative four is going to distribute basically into the parentheses here really that's going to accomplish two things first of all the four is going to cancel with the four here and then second of all we need to distribute the minus sign to both of these terms so we're going to get three minus three minus negative x gives us plus x and we need to see still if this equals x. 3 minus 3 is 0, plus x is x. So x does, in fact, equal x. So that's the first part, confirmed. OK, now we need to do the second part. So now we need to take our function f of x and plug it into our function g of x. So we're going to take this entire function f of x, go to our function g of x. Wherever we see an x, we're going to replace it with the entire function of f. So we're going to say this is going to become 3 minus and then we're going to take out our x and replace it with this whole thing in parentheses here so minus parentheses 3 minus 4x close parentheses and then that's all over 4 and again we need to verify does this equal x 
So let's go ahead and simplify this down. The minus sign is going to distribute into the parentheses there. We're going to get 3 minus 3 minus negative 4x gives us plus 4x all over 4. Okay, 3 minus 3 is 0, plus 4x is going to be 4x on our numerator, all over 4. And then the 4s are going to cancel, just leaving us with x equals x. So we verified that one as well. So now we've verified that f of g of x equals x and g of f of x equals x. So therefore, g and f must be inverses of each other algebraically. Okay, so now part b, we need to do this graphically. So to do this graphically, really all that means is graph the two functions and see if they're inverses of each other. So we, let's go ahead and start with a graph here. Uh, and let me just grab these functions. f of x equals 3 minus 4x and g of x equals 3 minus x all over 4. Okay, now before getting into graphing this, what I want to do is kind of think about how we can rewrite g of x because this function here is actually going to be a linear function. It's just kind of hard to tell by looking at it because it's in this fraction. So what I'm going to do is split this up into two little parts here. So 3 over 4, this is the same as saying 3 over 4 minus over 4. We can basically just split that into two, uh, two separate fractions because if we were to now, you know, think about going back the other direction from 3 fourths minus x over 4, since they have the same denominator, you can just add them together by adding the numerators together. You 3 minus x on your numerator all over 4, which is what we came from. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is take this a step further and think of this as instead of x over 4, think of it as 1 fourth x. So 3 fourths minus 1 fourth x. Okay, so the reason why I want to treat this as our function of x is because this looks much more similar to just kind of the general form of a function, y equals mx plus b, where m is your slope and b is your y-intercept, where the, the number that's being multiplied by x, which is negative one-fourth, is our slope, and then three-fourths is our y-intercept. Okay, so uh, let's label our axes first of all. You always want to make sure to label your axes. I know it seems silly, sometimes but if you're not doing it technically your graph could be wrong um okay so we'll say this is our x axis this is our y axis and we'll say each of these dash marks represents one i'm not going to label all these but you get the idea okay so for graphing g of x i'll graph g of x in orange just to kind of the color here so g of x in orange, we have a y-intercept of 3 fourths. So y-intercept of 3 fourths. Uh, so that'll be right about here. And then we have a slope of negative 1 fourth. So slope of negative 1 fourth. So that basically just means whenever your, your slope is a fraction like this, think of slope as rise over run. So if it's negative 1 fourth, that means we're going to go down one unit for every four units we go to the right. So our rise is negative 1 and our run is 4. So we're going to go down one unit for every four units we go to the right. So we're going to go down from three fourths to negative one fourth and then over four units. One, two, three, four, putting us right about here. So now g of x is going to be a linear function that connects these two points here. So uh, just quickly to kind of fill in some of these other points here, if we were to, you know, instead of going down one full unit and going over four, we could go down a quarter of a unit and over one, down a quarter of a unit, over one, down a quarter, over one, down a quarter, over one, and so on. So doing that will get us a handful of points here. I'm probably not gonna be able to successfully draw this in a straight line, but uh, let's see what I can do here. Yeah, that's pretty terrible. Well, hopefully you get the idea. Um, that should be a straight line. It is a linear function. I know I cannot keep a steady hand well enough to draw a straight line here, but it should be close enough to kind of demonstrate what I'm trying to demonstrate to you here. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and draw our other function in purple. That's pretty different from orange and green. So now we're going to draw F in purple. So F is 3 minus 4X. Again, think of this as a linear function where our y-intercept is 3 and our slope is negative 4. So our y-intercept is 3, so that's right here on the y-axis at a, 
a y value of positive three and our slope is minus four. So we're gonna go down four units for every one unit we go to the right. So if we go down four units, that'll be two, one, zero, negative one. And then over to the right, one unit puts us right about here. Um, and then let's see if I can get those in a straight line now. Uh, not great, but okay. So now we have these two lines. F is this purple one and G is this orange one here. Okay, so how do we know if these are inverses of each other? Well, one pretty simple fact about inverse functions is they should be mirror images of each other over the line y equals x. So if we draw a diagonal here through the, the line y equals x, basically we go through the point 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 0, 0, negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 2. That's the line y equals x. So think of this diagonal line y equals x as a mirror. And if f of x and g of x are like mirror images of each other over this diagonal line y equals x, then that shows you that your functions f and g are inverses of each other. Uh, similarly, we could actually look at some of the points that lie on our functions g and f. And if there's this, another point on the opposite one that just switches the x and y values, then we know that those are inverses of each other. I don't think that would technically be graphically. I think that would be like proving that they're inverses numerically by looking at actual points on the lines. Um, but you can see from looking at the graph of these two functions, I know, I know my sketch isn't perfect, but hopefully you can at least see well enough that these do look like, like mirror images of each other. This kind of goes off at a similar angle to this diagonal as G does. And then staying over here, these, these kind of mirror image each other across this line. So since the line y equals x is like a mirror that reflects f and g onto each other, that makes f and g inverses of each other graphically. So now we've shown it both algebraically and graphically. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, there's definitely going to be another topic that you're going to want to move on to next, which is how to actually find the inverse of a function. So you're going to want to go ch check out that video right there. It just goes over a similar type of problem where you're just given a function f and asked to find that function's inverse, which is a little bit different than the one we just did. So go click that video, check that out. Let's keep this brain train rolling.